How did Renbexi, once a gem in India's pharma story, went into spiral? Hi, my name is Rahul Chauhan and today we'll discuss about failure stories. Failure story of Renbexi, one of the leading giants in Indian pharma industry. Now, let's understand why failure stories first. Because failure stories gives us learnings. Success stories say hume milti inspirations. But actual learning hume aati hai failure stories say. So let's discuss about Ranbaxi. During 2004-2005, Dinesh Thakur and Rajender Kumar, two Indian employees of Ranbaxi, blew the whistle on its fabrication of drug test reports. Dinesh Thakur's office computer was soon found to be compromised. Renbaxi accused Thakur of visiting some porn sites using his office computer, forcing him to resign in 2005. Thakur left India for US and contacted Food and Drug Administration FDA, which started to investigate what he had claimed there. As a result, on 16th September 2008, the FDA issued two warning letters to Nbaxi and an import letter for genetic drugs produced by two manufacturing plants in India. So somewhere around February, 25th February 2009, the FDA said that it had halted the reviews of all drug applications, including data developed at Nbaxi's plant in India because of the practice of falsified data and the trust results in all applications. By around 8th of February 2012, three batches of proton pump inhibitor which were recalled in Netherlands due to presence of impurities. By 9th November 2012, Renbaxi had to halt production and recalled somewhere around 41 lots of generic drug due to glass particle found in some of the bottles. Also in 2012, an apparent dosage mistake was reported where 20 mg bottle tablets were actually found in 10 mg bottles. Now this is quite interesting. This has actually led to a recall from US of around somewhere around 64,000 bottles in a single shot. In September 2013, further problems were reported including a human hair in the tablet, all spots on another tablet, toilet facilities without running water, and a failure to instruct its employees to wash their hands using toilet after using toilet. Then Baxi in this in return was prohibited from manufacturing any drug which was related to FDA at its Mohali facility until and unless it complies with US FDA requirements. A business empire led by two savvy and very hardworking young men started to have these kind of financial wrongdoings coming out. A substantial part of proceeds from Renbex's sale was transferred to various family owned companies. This money is still at the center of various probes and controversies including Radha Swami Satsang Pyas, which is actually added by one of their brother, uh, one of their relatives. Singh brothers have been accused of taking out thousands of crores of money from Fortis and Raleigh. The, the brothers faced fraud by various government agencies, including Serious Fraud Investigation Office. Government agencies have been probing the brothers' role in all the wrong doings. So let's first understand the Daichi case in particular, because Renbaxi sold off its business to Daichi somewhere in 2008. The Renbaxi sale had raised eyebrows not just because of the huge money it fetched, but also with a twist which came after the sale. While Singh brothers were selling Renbaxi, the company was facing US FDA and Department of Justice in US. So at one side they are facing FDA and the other side they did not inform to the seller that there were issues within the organization. It was also accused of using 
falsified data for test results. Now, this is very interesting. All their applications, even the prior application has got false results and false data also. Later, the US FDA banned somewhere around two dozen of Renbaxi drug from entering into US. For this, Renbaxi had to pay around $500 million in fines. Daichi also, then for, because of these kind of issues, Daichi filed a suit in a tribunal in Singapore and Daichi won an award of around $550 million, Singapore dollars. And for concealing these kind of information about US FDA probes to Daichi. And in fact, when the Singh brothers approached uh, the courts in India, the, the award of around $550 million given to Daichi was upheld by the courts in India as well. So I'll share certain experts from journalist Catherine Ibn who had from various articles which were uh, you know released in different publications she's also an author of the book the bottle of lies which in fact discusses in detail about renbaxi and its wrongdoings renbaxi was one of the first overseas manufacturer to sell generic drugs in us and one of the largest generic drug suppliers globally its study practices started somewhere in 2000 but it would take years for FDA to take any action behind for this. Whistleblower Dinesh Thakur encountered a web of systematic fraud being committed at the company. The company often used a very low quality ingredient to save money and it also manip manipulated quality control data or they just made numbers out of thin air as a result. The company was selling drugs with impurities which could endanger any patient and it and the patient's safety it was alleged that Renbaxi top management knew all the problems but they did nothing to improve its manufacturing processes or come clean with the fda in the us fda inspectors can go to any factory and they can just, you know, take an inspection. However, this doesn't, this is not the case when the pharmaceutical company has an outlet or a factory outside of the US. In those cases, the FDA plants, FDA has to notify the plants in advance of visits for, for these kind of inspection. This lead time actually gave overseas companies a good amount of time just to prepare for all the inspection. Catherine Iban, in fact, describes that the accounts of companies were actually, you know, the, the companies which actually would clean the workspace, they would shred records, fabricate all the documents, even destroying any drug which is visibly contaminated. Some Renbaxi plants received warnings and other regulatory actions from FDA. It, FDA also issued an import alert somewhere in 2008 against two plants of Renbaxi bearing somewhere around 30 drugs which were being manufactured in those two plants. In two, 2012, the agency also prevented Renbaxi from using certain facilities for the US market until and unless those facilities come out clean with US manufacturing quality standards now, this becomes quite you know interesting coming coming here other and plants squid through regulatory inspection entirely like the plant that manufactured generic drugs which were quite you know famous in us less than a year the plant passed in an inspection in 2012 and actually admit that all these drugs manufactured in those plants actually had small pieces of blue glass so this is actually dangerous fda holds that a generic drug has to be a of same drug which is of the brand name drug the demand for cheaper generic drugs in us was enormous a delay in launching of a generic version of any medicine would cost millions of dollars on a daily basis 
and after numerous cases in which patients actually experience problems from switching from a brand name drug to a generic version many medical professionals begin avoiding certain generic drugs so let me give you a brief what is a generic drug generic drug is actually as same as actual drug but because the actual drug is being under patent so they can't have a copycat coming out once the patent is, is over the other companies manufacture pharma companies are asked to create a similar drug with the same kind of chemical formulations but using a reverse engineering scenario rather than just copying the complete formula so that's how it's it's known as generic drug and it has to work in the similar way the way it a normal patented drug has to work this all started when generic drugs were being filed on a first come first serve basis and that's where the problem actually started if you just file it first and make and create the generic drug on a later stage you can just work it out because you get exclusive 6 months just to market that particular product the situation was even worse in africa where many manufacturers ship their lowest quality drug and some were in fact completely counterfeit with independent lab analysis showing that it has absolutely no active ingredient whatsoever those that have active ingredients often didn't have enough of of it and doctors would need to prescribe anywhere between double up to 10 times just to, to achieve an effect of that particular dose another whistle blower rajendra kumar explained that the while the company was slashing its pro- production cost it actually did so with using cheapest ingredient available in the market this would actually make the cost of production very low but it would have the drug would have no effect on the patient whatsoever it was also helped that the report noted that the known availability in india and lab latin america for validation of methods for those drugs so these things were able to hide in short benbexi had no method to confirm what is the content of a drug in those markets for example the data collected by dinesh thakur's team showed that of 160 drug products approved in brazil since 2000 almost all had been filled with phony batch records and stability data that never existed the report also noted that in majority of filings made by rec renbexi were intentionally misrepresented in the end the fall of renbexi is a classic case how hubris can seed hunger for money and overconfidence can lead to a house of frauds as quickly as it was built it can fall instantly like a house of cards the tales of both the brothers malvinder and shivinder singh doesn't end just with the renbexi it goes to a different story so till the next time we'll discuss with we'll come up with another fairly story to learn more for our own businesses keep sharing our videos and keep commenting see you till the next time thank you for watching